Hello everyone. So today we're going to do a little bit of blender work because we're going to get into the part where we do, where we do inventory and in order to do that I need some inventory. Um, now most of the old Minecraft likes use textures for inventory but I have, of course I'm going to be using 3D models. Um, one of the reasons I need to use 3D models is simply because uh, these are going to be in-world objects and they need to be uh, ready for just being dropped into the world. So what we're building are hab modules or other kind of modules that can be dropped from orbit. So in this game our inventory is actually going to be uh, an inventory on the starship above, the, ha the, the orbiting starship above, um, rather than on our mech because our mech can't carry around 8 billion hab modules. Uh, and in fact that's one of the things that always annoys me about Minecraft likes in general they generally allow you to carry around just an incredibly funny amount of stuff um, to the point where it's it's a hilarious in-joke uh, Terraria lets you carry around something like uh, 120 different slots worth of inventory each one of which can be filled with 99 <laughs> of whatever it is you're carrying uh, and then when they re when they did the version 2 release they increased it <laughs> So we're going to get around that by making it so that our inventory is on the starship above. You, of course, can make your inventory whatever you'd like. So what we're building now is a very simple drop module, which will be our most basic form of drop module. And it will be just a, uh, a very temporary one-person habitation module with some storage space. So what I've just done is I've just outlined the core hab module. Uh, so inside of this will be where the person lives. Uh, and while it is theoretically half a meter across, our meters are different size, so it's it's actually not it's not huge, but it's large enough for a person to fit inside. Uh, in order to actually make it so that a person can fit inside, we're going to need to cut a doorway in, which we're going to do right here. And we're going to go ahead and scale these out so that it's shaped something like an actual doorway might be, and then extrude them forward along the y-axis to create something like a um, uh, airlock. Yes, that, airlock, one of those things. Uh, now you can see that we've got this kind of slightly bowed face due to the fact that we're extruding from a circle. That's easy enough. You can just scale y0 and it'll flatten it out for you. Um, and we can actually reshape this however we want, but I'm okay with it as it is. The only thing I'm going to do is give it a little bit of, of complexity at the tip um, so that it looks distinct enough to be interesting. Um, but I'm not going not gonna to add a whole lot of complexity to it. So then we're going to go ahead and we could fill in all six points. We, just could, we could just select all of these and hit F. But if we do that, then how it gets split into triangles is not something we can control. So instead, we're going to go ahead and manually select these pieces and fill them in as we would like. And we did create some tries, but since this isn't animated, it doesn't matter. So the next thing we want to do is put a little bit of a door in this door, which we can do simply by grabbing these points and extruding and scaling down and extruding and putting them in. There you go. Now we have an airlock. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add some storage modules. So we don't actually care about, we don't have to add storage modules, we just have to add a storage module. And we're going to do that by doing the same thing on the opposite side, back here. Except um, in this case we don't need to delete those because we're going to have a contiguous storage model that grows. So we're just going to go ahead and scale that out um, along the y-axis that we are and then extrude it again, uh, scale y0 as before, and then extrude it again to form it into a module. Um, I guess I can just deal with it. Uh, there are ways to make sure that it doesn't extrude down through the zero axis, but I'm a little too lazy to go into that because I'm trying to trying to keep my speed up. Anyhow, what we really want to avoid is going over the 0.5 meter limit here because our tiles are 1 meter. So if we leave this as a 1 meter square object, it will fit neatly into one tile. 
So let's go ahead and extrude out a door. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Extrude out a door for us to access our supplies with here. And another door for us to access our supplies with on the other side. And now you might be wondering why I bothered to make those into topology when I could just have used bump maps or something similar. And the answer is that uh, we're going to actually make them doors later on um, and that those will actually swing out or slide up or something. Um, and so I'm just putting them there basically as um, uh, just to have that ready for when I need to do that. Although, you know, I'll probably end up remaking the entire model anyway. Alright, so now we've got the uh, entry point and we've got the storage module. Let's go ahead and make the storage module, module a little bit bigger. That actually looks okay. I kind of like that. So let's just bring the top down a touch. So the last thing we need to do with the topology part is we're going to go ahead and add in some connectors. Um, so there are a lot of ways to add in topology into the middle of a mesh. And the way I'm going to use is just a simple extrude method, uh, which everyone is probably familiar with because I've used it already several times. So you extrude and then you scale down. Now the thing is that since we've extruded on both sides, we're scaling down towards the center, which isn't what we want. So let's scale down on the z-axis like this, and then scale down on the y-axis like this. And in that way, the two don't actually, you know, collide with the center at all. Then we can drag them down towards the bottom. But you can see that we've got this very square shape, and what we actually want is a circular shape. Not a, not a perfectly circular, excuse me, not perfectly circular, just circular enough that we can tell what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and grab the corners here and drag them down. And then grab the corners here and drag them up. And there you go. Oh, that didn't work out. I grabbed a, the wrong corner. There we go. And now we have something vaguely circular. So let's go ahead and do our trick with a scale x0 because it's on a different side. And over here um, actually, let's go ahead and extrude first. Uh, extrude point. Oh, extrude point one, and then over here, extrude point one. There we go. By using a number, we can keep them even. Now, you could use a mirror modifier for this. There's no reason you can't. Um, I just am not, so I have to do this stuff manually. There we go. And so now the question is exactly how do we want these to look? Um, and I think I'm going to leave that entirely up to um, the texture. Uh, that's fine in terms of uh, topology for now. Uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit more. Sorry, the noise is starting to pop up a little bit here. No. There. Um, so if I get a little bit erratic, that's why. So we'll scale that up, and that'll give us a little bit of, a little bit of texture to it. There you go. Uh, now we could add some solar panels or something, but let's go ahead and not. We'll just leave it like this for now. But we do need a texture, so... Uh, someone has decided that this is the ideal time to make noise. It's always quiet until you try and cut a, uh, a video. Alright, so over here, we're going to go ahead and open up a new image for the UV editor. Let's close this. Um, and we get to try and unwrap this. Now how are we going to unwrap it so that it is like we want it to be? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take the cheap way out and start by just doing a... Oh, did I not have screencast keys on? They must have turned themselves off. I'm sorry, guys. The whole point of this was to have screencast keys. Um, and then I totally missed missed it. It turned itself off somehow. That's annoying. <sighs> now I feel really dumb, because the whole point of this was, was to actually show off that. Oh, well, whatever. Sorry, guys, you don't get to see the screencast keys. Um, but we're going to go ahead and unwrap, project from view, and then we're going to just scale this up. And now this is a really, really 
awkward way to actually do texturing, so uh, we're going to go ahead and polish it a bit by doing some more texture work uh, using pieces of this that don't get along well with that particular like that. Those don't get along well. Uh, these don't get along well. And the surface up here doesn't get along well. I can't see very well, so let's And uh, let's go ahead and leave it at that for this for this first take. And then we're just going to unwrap, and then you can unwrap using some other method, like this one. Um, right now we don't really care how good it looks because we're going to do a lot of, of topology changes later on, and, uh, and our mesh will have to fi be fixed for that. But we do want it to be clear enough that we can actually do some editing um, and create a texture for it. So I'm just going to select some of the... Actually, you can go into face select. I don't know why I didn't. So you can select some of these faces here, and we might as well go ahead and select the door faces. I'm going to use Alt, Shift, grab the door, and then we can unwrap those as well. Those are much too large. Let's scale them down. And let's go ahead and see how we're arrayed. We've used up almost all of our space for this first take, um, but we do have some more stuff that's not working, uh, such as the top of the door here, which, since we broadcast from the side, no tops or bottoms end up looking well, neither do any of the faces. So let's go ahead and grab these guys, and you can see over here that they are these awkward uh, flat shapes. And let's go ahead and grab the inside of the door frame on both sides. And it's okay if they overlap with something. I don't really care. That'll work. Alright, so we can save that. And then we can also export the UV map right here. And we can use that to create a texture. Anyhow, that's it for today, uh, or at least the, for this episode. And I'm sorry that I didn't turn on screencast keys. This is the second take, and um, they were on for the first take, and they turned themselves off.